This mouse looks kind of weird. It looks like a piece of shit. Like actually looks like a piece of shit, but it's like really, really good. This is my guitar and it's full of stickers, but the one that I love the most is in the most prominent position right here. This says, I drink too much and that's an issue. And it's got a coffee cup next to it. Isn't that so cool? I think this line perfectly reflects my personal work style. I'm not one of those people that like love to drink coffee, but what I do love is the environment of a coffee shop. And that is the theme of today's video, my friends. And what's in my bag video, where it's not so much about photography or filmmaking, but more about the post-production end or the pre-production end, or just like in general schoolwork, doing assignments, doing math homeworks, all the way to the extreme one, doing VFX work, 3D animation modeling on the road. Uh, this is, this is for that. So, what's in my bag? Shit. Now the first thing to talk about is of course, the bag. And this is Peak Design Everyday Backpack 30 liter. And the reason that I love this bag so much is that this bag can do both everyday stuff as well as production stuff. And honestly, this is like one of the only photography bags that holds a lot of gear while at the same time being somewhat aesthetically pleasing. I love this bag so much that this is actually my second version of this bag. And I got the upgraded version because this one broke. <laughs> because I use it way too much. Peak Design is like notorious for their zippers, but they fixed it with their new zippers, which I is like one of the best things about this bag. So first, let's take a look at what's on the outside of the bag. And the, and the first thing is this clip, and this is called the Hero Clip. It's a carabiner, but when you open it up, it actually turns into a hook and a carabiner. And this can be used for many use cases. For example, you can, you can hang your bag off a table like this, and then your bag never has to touch the floor. But I think the most underrated use case is using this to drag your electric skateboard. Because the electric skateboard is like super, super heavy, but if you just hook this onto the bridge, and then you can use this to drag your skateboard like a suitcase. The skateboard has wheels, might as well use them. Next thing, that I carry is an umbrella, and this is a Xiaomi umbrella. Uh, it's really good. It's just like an all-around good umbrella. It's very minimalistic looking. It matches with the bag, and I like the handle. It's like, and you know, in general, it just sucks to be caught in a storm without an umbrella, especially if you got a girlfriend. And if you don't have this, you, you don't have a girlfriend anymore. So, the third thing that is on my bag is the Peak Design Capture Clip, and this is sort of obvious. Like everyone knows about this. I have a lot of straps. I have like two Peak Design straps. I never use them. <laughs> uh, I used one of them for my guitar strap, but ever since I got the capture plate, I have never actually used my camera strap. So if you're thinking about getting one and you look at it, it's like really, really pricey. Just know that this is literally the only carrying system that you'll like ever need. So might as well save those money on the straps and just get a capture clip. And what's really cool about having this is both me and Kathy are all on the capture clip ecosystem. So we can just switch camera bodies around and it's just, you know, ecosystem, man. And finally, let's take a look at what's inside the bag. Gosh, I want a top down angle. But anyways, in my top zipper, this is my main editing computer. This is the MacBook Pro 16 inch. What I love the most about this is not actually the speed, but the size because Premiere Pro is really not designed for smaller screens. And 16 inch, I think, in my opinion, is the smallest screen that Premiere Pro is designed for. And I also use this computer for a lot of very processing intensive tasks, such as a lot of 3D work in Blender as well as Maya. For this computer, as long as you use the render farm, it holds up just fine. Uh, the next item is the iPad Pro. Uh, this is a 2018 iPad Pro. Literally, I have not had any reason, not one reason at all to upgrade because this is so freaking good. I have the iPad Pro on the Magic Keyboard and with the Apple Pencil. Yes, this is pretty expensive and it's the holy grail in terms of iPad Pros. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to simplify all of my stuff onto just these two machines. Like that means getting rid of every single paper that ever exists in my life. I don't ever want to touch a sheet of paper ever again. It's bad for the streets, it's bad for organizing, it's bad for keeping track. Everyone knows about how the Apple Pro is great at taking notes. But for me, I use it for something completely different. This is really my tablet when I want to draw something on my actual computer. For example, Photoshop and retouching. When I want to do photo manipulations, when I want to draw layer mask, uh, this is what I use. Because so at one point you gotta invest in a tablet and I'd rather have a tablet that can watch YouTube videos as well. And I'm also taking a calculus class this semester, so I need this to like take notes. And I'm really proud of this. Let me show you guys. My notes are actually like very organized. You don't see this a lot in guys' notes. Just for some reason, guys just don't like taking aesthetically pleasing notes. I guess I'm one of the very few exceptions and I'm really proud of that. And onto the Magic Keyboard. 
The reason that I got this keyboard is actually so that I can take some load off my main computer. Like for example, when my computer is rendering proxies, I can then use my iPad to write an essay and I don't waste any time. And this is one of the ways that I boost productivity is. These two, although they are very, very pricey and very expensive, these are sort of the staple of my workflow. So they are worth investing. And the final thing, I'm going to this coffee shop today and it seems like I can get a free drink today, which is pretty cool. On to the main compartment of the bag. Ooh, mystery. Oh, I still got my passport. New Zealand got the best passports, man. First thing is my mouse. This is the, this mouse looks kind of weird. It looks like a piece of shit. Like actually looks like a piece of shit, but it's like really, really good. This is the Logitech MX vertical mouse. The reason that it looks like a piece of shit is it's actually an ergonomic mouse. Your hand actually sits on it like this at an angle. And if you actually try this, like put your hand on the desk, the natural resting position of your hand is actually like this, not like this, not turned over. And if you turn your hand over for an extended period of time, it will actually hurt your hand. Like your muscles or your bones will start to like, like do stuff. In general, it's just way better to just invest in an ergonomic mouse. It doesn't have to be this one. There's a ton of ergonomic mouse out there, but just, just get one. And yes, these are sort of bulky, but if you strip everything down, I think you'll make some room for this mouse. And it's just something that you have to hold for like the entire duration that you're using your computer. So I think it's worth it to have this take up a little bit more space and then not get wrist injuries in the future. And in general, you know, it's just very comfortable to use. It's, it's a little weird when you start using it, but just after a few days, uh, next up is headphones, editing headphones. It's the WH-1000XM3. This is not editing headphones, but what I love about this is sound isolation. I tried not to do final mixes on these because they do not give you an accurate representation of what the sound actually sounds like. So in terms of final mixes, I'm using the Sennheiser HD600 headphones, which are also not sort of accurate, but they're hi-fi, so like they're slightly more accurate than this. So this is what I use for final mix, but on the road, like when I'm just editing video, I'm not doing EQ. It's great to only hear what's in your video and not hear the surrounding sounds. So uh, you might be wondering like, what are these black stripes for? The XM3s are like really fragile. Uh, they're made of plastic, so they break. And I just taped it back on with electrical tapes. I know one of my friends actually had his XM3 broken and we both tape it up. If you're looking into investing in a pair, make sure you're okay with this. Otherwise, put it in a case. I never travel with a case because they're so bulky, so. I kind of saw this coming. Oh, this thing. This is the Omni Charge 20 Plus and it's my favorite power bank because it can charge anything. And by anything, I do mean anything because it's got a wall plug right here. So if you got an aperture light on set and you're low on V-mount batteries, this can pretty much save your day. You can plug it right into this power bank. I've not tried it, but I assume it'll work. Don't quote me though. Other than this wall powered mount, it's also got two fast charging USB type A ports. It's also got a USB power delivery port and a DC port. And these two ports are both capable of charging other devices as well as charging the power bank itself. But you cannot charge a device as well as deliver power with USB PD at the same time. Which in other words, you can't just like plug this into the wall and then plug this into your MacBook and I expect this to power your MacBook forever. If I'm like really, really low on battery and I can't find a wall plug. Uh, this will add like a additional half an hour to my editing time. Uh, next up, mint. Kathy likes this. And my mint, I like this. It's really good. On the bottom compartment, I've got the Peak Design Tech Pouch. It holds a ton of shit in a very, very organized configuration. But this suffers from the same problem as the version one Peak Design Everyday Bags. These zippers are broken. Now the zipper can only go a quarter way, so if I go any further, they'll break. For mine, it doesn't completely seal up, but because this organizes my shit so well, I still use it. I'd love to get a second one, but it's pretty expensive, so. All right, inside of my tech pouch, Let's talk about charging. This is sort of the biggest thing when I'm on the road. Like I have to be next to a power outlet. Otherwise my computer just dies. You edit videos on a MacBook. Practically speaking, it doesn't have built-in power, which is why I've upgraded from the default MacBook Pro charger um, to this one. This is the Anchor Power Port Atom PD4. And the USB PD ports on this delivers power up to 100 watts. So that's actually a little bit, a tiny little bit over the default MacBook Pro chargers, which charges at 96 watts, I think. But what really sold me on this is, unlike those MacBook Pro chargers, which sticks directly to the wall, and if the socket comes loose a little bit, it falls out. This has got its own dedicated cables, which not only means that it doesn't fall out because the other end is like 
you know, those plugs. This also means that I can stretch this further so I can reach an outlet maybe like three meters or five meters away. Uh, when I'm in a coffee shop, this is pretty vital. And speaking of MacBook adapters, <laughs> I have grown to love the Type-C ports because my entire workflow basically surrounds the Type-C environments. But once in a while, I do encounter a few circumstances mainly for HDMI ports that I do have to rely on some kind of adapter and the adapter of my choice is the uni adapter I don't know what it's called but there's no particular reason that I chose this except that it's got like all the ports I need and in the end that's all that really matters but just keep in mind that when you're getting an adapter for a MacBook make sure to get one with actual cable because I had one of those hyperdrives and they they look pretty sexy but it's really scary to see this dangling from my MacBook and potentially damaging my type c ports because it's like all together and there's like actual strains on the cable and it's pulling it down and all that stuff but basically get one with like actual cables and this is one adapter that i really really need this is the cf express card to usb-c because r5 uh this is a headphone splitter because it's just like in general a good idea to have a headphone splitters around you gotta show your work to other people like for example clients or other team members that want to listen on a pair of headphones and you don't want to be sharing earbuds. This is a multi-tool. Multi-tools are super great because you have no idea how much time you waste on set trying to find like a knife, cut like your gels or something. Or if you have a screw that's loose, looking for a screwdriver lying around. This will save you so much time. Like if you have one of these, everyone will be asking for your multi-tool when you're on set. And this is my hard drive. This is a five terabytes lacy hard drive. Lacy, lacy, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's probably more that I need but it's the only one that I got because it's the first drive that I got and I just kept it around. And at last, just some general accessories. It's always good to have cash around just in case if you're in some really, really sticky situations, either they don't accept the payment method or your phone dies or something goes wrong, it's really good to have cash lying around. And what's also good for just like lying around tech is USB drives. You know you need a USB drive. You're always looking for one. Just like, just, just get one, okay? And last but not least, Apple Watch watch bands. I do sometimes get bored of my watch bands or sometimes I go into different occasions and want to switch it up and all that stuff. But honestly, I probably don't need to keep this with me all the time, but I just find that this bag is like a very good place to manage all of my stuff. So I just keep it here and I know where it is. I actually don't need it on the road, but yeah, this is pretty much all I carry on a daily basis with me. Coffee shops, trying to get work done, trying to get homework done, all this stuff. And if you like this sort of video, we have more What's In My Bag videos coming up in the future. More about like general photo shoot setup or like video shoot setups. That's all planned for future. So if you like all that, please subscribe and stay tuned for further videos. And goodbye.